I went there this morning and this is a black business. Notice the number of white people in this black business. It is a black business. You walk in, they're playing loud R&B music and they serve a black crowd. Most of the employees, I think most of the employees are black or Puerto Rican. And this is the situation every time I go to this place. It is always packed. The chicken and waffles are the bomb. That peach cobbler um, French toast is the bomb. And every time I go in there, this is what you see. And this is a black business. And the owners of this business bought Le, P Le Petit Marche, another black business that I had a little part in helping them become successful. But once again, this is black business. You can be successful. You can make a lot of money. You can become a black business owner. And essentially on the weekends, that line, that parking lot is full. They have absolutely no parking and they're packed. They're consistently packed. They're across the street from the aquarium. And one of the things is, as I was walking to my car, because this is where I always park, because you, you, you can, you can't, it is very hard to get anywhere close to this place, but this is the Atlanta Breakfast Club, and it's a rainy day in Georgia, and they're packed. They're filled to capacity. This is a, a black business, a black business, a very successful, profitable black business. Now, as we walk around the corner, because I'm heading to my car, this is another black business. And I believe they open at night. And right now, a lot of people have figured out that they can park over here while they're at the breakfast club. So some people have gotten blocked in. It's kind of funny because people like every time you go downtown, man, people be parking crazy. People be parking all kinds of ways. And um, one of the things I see with this, and this is during the pandemic. This is during COVID. This place is packed. All these car, all these folks are at the Atlanta Breakfast Club. That's where they are. As I make my way, because I always, yeah. I figured out yeah. that I can just go ahead and park back here and be in and out real quick. No stress, no drama. But once again, people don't understand and don't un know the power of black business. You can become a very powerful black business owner. Yes, you can. What is going on, people? What you saw in the beginning of this video was a clip of a black business. A very black business. A very black, black, black business. You walk in, they're playing rhythm and blues, uh, people are themselves. And if you noticed, you saw not one, not two, not three, not four. You saw a bunch of white people catering to this black business, sitting there, getting their grub on in this black business. I'm about to tell y'all something. A lot of y'all don't know this. When I first started here on the internet, with making money A to Z to self storage and auctions, 95% of my customer base was black or well, white. In the beginning, 95% of my customer base was white. Uh, 10, 12 years ago, black folks were not doing resale. They weren't doing eBay. They weren't doing uh, Amazon. This is a relatively new uh, emergence. Back then, the majority of my customers were white. They knew that I was black because how did they know I was black? I promoted my book here on YouTube. And here's the thing. I used to cuss much more than I cuss now. And I used to, I was 100% myself. I did not alter shape, put on the facade to get this white money. I was myself. 
And I'm here to tell you guys, things have changed. You can start, you can be a black person, and you can start a business and get black money, white money, Asian money, Hispanic money. When I had the upscale garage sale, 65% of my customer base was Hispanic. They knew, and my, me and my partner were black. They didn't care. See, here's the thing. If you start a business that gets results and solves problems, people will pay you money. It's just that simple. And I have a lot of the moist men, the little, God bless them, bless their little hearts. They're, they're unaccomplished, they're, they're bitches, they're afraid to try anything, and they come here and they pee all over the channel, like, thank you for the people who support this channel. I had someone, there's no way that your Uber driver can make 500. And then boom, someone's like, well, my uncle, he drives private. He does a thousand bucks a day. Boom, right in your face, you moist man. Right in your face, rubbing the balls all up on your face, all up on your chin. Ah. See, for my action takers and every day, more and more people are piling into the corporate papers. For my action takers, one of the biggest journeys you've got to do, and I gotta say the service at this black business is excellent. The, the, the wait staff has been trained to be customer oriented. They get your order, they look after you. And this is a black business. Black business has changed. You can be a black person and you can be yourself and you can make a lot of money. You think I could act like this in corporate America? <laughs> no. no, no, that's a no go. Roger, no go. No, no, no. You know, I'm going to tell you a little story. I, to this day, don't know why I never got in trouble because I used to do stuff up in corporate America. There was this situation where I had a meeting with a customer. Chick was hot, red hair, green eyes, double D's, tight little butt, beautiful legs, and she always wore these silk blouses and these nice pencil skirts, and she always had heels, and baby girl had some legs. She has some beautiful legs, beautiful legs. And I'm trying to sell her because she was in charge of the office furniture for their new location. This is a 500 person company. So they were gonna need, um, I think out of the, out of the 500 employees, 200, no, 100 worked in the corporate office and the rest worked in the warehouse. So we were going to have to have furniture for 100 people. We were going to have to have executive furniture for the CEO, the presidents and stuff like this. And then we were going to have, so essentially 25 of these offices were, going, were plush, were plush, right? So this is about a million dollar deal, million dollars. And one day, you know, I'm, I'm visiting her because selling, you know, Many of these people like these one close, these one close sales. I'm like, you're not going to close a million dollar deal in one close. It ain't going to happen. It's going to take multiple closes. So I was sitting in her office. This was probably the fifth time that um, we had met. We had, uh, we had the first introductory meeting where I introduced myself and introduced what my company could do for her. And then we had toured the warehouses and this was the meeting where I was going to get the check. And I go in and we're just sitting there and we're talking and I've met this woman four times. So I have a sense of who she is and she was strangely quiet and I could like, you know, this is one of the things that help you with sales. And, um, I was sitting in front of her desk and she, she was looking down in her hands and I, I got up 
And I said, stand up. And she, she's like, why? I said, just stand up. And she stood up, and I gave her this big old hug, and I was like, there's clearly something wrong with you. There's something going on with you, and it's going to be okay. This chick started crying. Her grandmother had died, and the news of her grandmother dying sent her mother to the hospital, and she was so stressed. She had all this stuff that was going on, and she's like, I need to go be with my family, but I got all this other stuff. And I was like, look, I got you, all right? Her name was Jill. I used to call her Jill Baby. I was like, Jill, Jill Baby, I got you. I'm going to go ahead and put all this stuff together. What you need to do is book a plane and go take care of your family. And she said, you know, you're right. You're right. I need to do that. And, you know, let the people, your, your, your higher ups know what you're doing. And um, Jill Baby, at that moment, she's at the phone. She sit there. She booked her plane and she was going to leave in like the next six hours. And then before she left, she says, my man, I need to cut you a check. So she cuts me a check because they, 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 essentially my boutique firm, we didn't operate on credit. We, we, we had to get half the money down to start the order. So they, she walked me now to the accounting department. Boom, boom, boom. Cut me a check. And that was one of my larger deals because the check was for $500,000. And I had her cell phone number, so once she went away, I continued to be in contact with her. I ain't gonna lie. I wanted to fuck this chick. I ain't gonna even lie. And I was just looking after her every morning. I was like, hey, Jill, baby, how's it going? You know, how's it going? And she says, uh, I'm at the hospital. My mother, she's, she had a heart attack. My mother had a heart attack. And I was like, you need to stay with your mom, you know. And, you know, because like I said, I got you on this. Uh, the orders and stuff has been done. And, you know, so Jill was up there like three weeks, which was cool because it took several. It took like three months for the orders to be processed and stuff. And I started running interference and I was like, hey, you need communications. I got a communication guy. I became a, a serious resource for Jill Baby. And then like three weeks later, Jill's like, yep, yeah, I'm getting ready to come home. We're literally communicating every day, right? And I'm acting like a boyfriend. I'm like, what's up? Good morning, good night. Uh, every day I would call her and then she comes back to town, right? This white chick. And I was like, I'm picking you up. I'm picking you up. So I meet her at the airport and she comes out she looks way more relaxed and she greets me with this big hug and she kisses me on the lips. So I got the check. Jill Baby and I dated for two years. I got the check. I got the honey. I got the money. And I was 100% myself. And this is one of the things I, I'll let you guys know. You don't have to change to make money with who you are. You may have to change how you do things, your philosophy, your procedures, your processes for getting things done if you don't have those. You may have to change that. But at your core, like, I haven't changed who I am. Even when I was in corporate America, like, I have done so many things. And, like, when I, that first time I hugged her, it was so hard for me not to grab her ass. She had, she had the woo! She had that, that apple. She had that apple, and I was just like, hey, we're hugging, we're hugging. And then uh, I pick her up from the airport, we go, we go to dinner, we go to the Atlanta fish market, we talk about it and stuff, and then at this point, I take Jill Baby to her house. I didn't know where she lived until this point, and I spend the night. And then, you know, the whole process, we're working on the furniture and everything, and people who worked with Jill noticed a change in Jill. Um, the receptionist, she was this Puerto Rican chick. And I remember one day I come in there and she said, oh, Poppy, Poppy here, Poppy, po Poppy's here, Pappy, Poppy. She, she, I was like, she said it like Poppy. She said, Poppy's here. And one day she's like, you know, ever since y'all started dating, she's been so easy to work with. Thank you. 
Because Jill Baby was kind of like a ball buster. She was a woman in corporate America. She had to be on her P she had to, she had to be on her job. She had to be. She was she was very firm yet kind of standoffish. But I'm just telling you, I was a black salesman that got a million dollar deal, and I was myself. And I consistently, and this is like I said, I don't know why I didn't get in trouble with the shit I did in corporate America. I would do all kinds of stuff, but I have really great empathy. I have the ability to detect. I can look at someone and know how they're feeling. And like, once again, there's, there's a time for business and there's a time to be a human. And me being a human got me that, you know, my cut of that million dollar deal was about 95,000. So I made 95,000 off that deal. And Jill Baby had that wet, wet. <laughs> she had that wet, wet. I mean, my gosh, y'all know what I'm talking about. That, that wet, wet, that like, that sloppy wet, that wet, wet, that woo. <laughs> uh! Yeah, that went down. And I'm just saying that you can be black you can have your culture and you can still make a lot of money. I am proof of that. So what I want you guys to do, because I have an agenda. The agenda is 50,000 corporate citizens. What is a corporate citizen? A corporate citizen is a person who has a collection of companies at a minimum makes 250 K a year or more. Why 250 K? 250K, my life changed. See, here's the thing. All these people are like, you know, you got to make all this money. If you make 250, you can live like a millionaire. You can live like a millionaire. You can live in the million dollar house. You can drive a Porsche. You can drive a Ferrari if you manage your money correctly. So why I want to create these corporate citizens? I have, for the most part, outside of the moist men group, I receive a tremendous amount of respect. I meet other business owners, I'm immediately respected. I go into places, people just feel that my air is different. I get mad, mad respect in most areas of my life, except for the moist, weak men on YouTube segment. Everywhere else, I get mad respect. I get mad respect from the women I date. I get mad respect from the people I interact with. I get mad respect from my banker. And I want you to get that level of respect in other areas of your life. And you become a corporate citizen, that's gonna happen. You will be able to get that level of respect. You will be able to get that level of admiration. And I'm here to tell you, the money's nice, but the respect is nicer. To know that when you walk into a bank and they know your name, you ain't even met this bank man. You know, it's like, good, hello, Mr. Cameron. How you doing? They know who you are because they looked at your account and they respect those numbers. I want you to feel like that. I want you to have that type of life. I want your children to grow up in the million dollar house. I want you to drive what you want to drive, not drive what you have to drive. I want you to live where you want to live, not live where you have to live. I want you to vacation where you want to vacation. One of the things I want for these guys, the corporate citizen, because for each corporate citizen that I create, we're going to touch 100 people. We're going to touch wives. We're going to touch children. We're going to touch family members. We're going to touch employees. And create this community of real bona fide business owners. I, I know I talk a lot of smack about JT Automations, JT Hustles, and I, I probably will continue to talk a lot of smack because here's the reality, my good people. You're going to be in for a journey, and the beginning of the journey is going to be rough. It ain't going to be easy. 
It ain't going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, you could make $70,000 a month working 10 hours a week. In the beginning, they ain't going to happen. In the beginning, you could probably going to be working 100 hours a week to make 7000 That's more in line with what I know to be true. But here's the thing, guys. It is so worth it. It is so worth it. When I was in the hospital with my heart attack, you know what I was worried about? I was worried about getting well. I wasn't worried about bills. I, I, I wasn't worried. I have a friend who's going through economic hell right now. And um, her daughter just graduated high school and just found out they don't have the money and her daughter will not be able to start college in the fall. And this is a very, very heavy moment. And she, she's feeling like a failure. I don't want you guys to be feeling like that because once you get a taste of this corporate life, you will never go back to being who you were. You can never go back to being regular. You can never go back to being um, a regular Joe. You, you can never go back. You, you can never go back to being John, John Q. Public. Joe Q, Joe Q public, whatever, whatever it is, you can't go back to that. And what I want to do and what you want to do is go below, get in the corporate papers, get in there and start working on your corporate empire. Cause like I said, I am not going to be like all these fake ass YouTubers who are blowing smoke up your ass, telling you that you can start this business in a few weeks, a few months, you're going to be making all this money. It is complete and utter bullshit. And they should be slapped into a coma because they just trying to get you to view their fucked up videos versus actually being a proper resource to help you start a business. They're going to tell you this slick and fast stuff. They're going to lie to you. And then here's the thing. They're not making mistakes. Let's be 100% clear. They're consciously lying to you. And I find that to be patently disgusting. And you can send these videos to JT Automation, Raise. I don't really give a damn because none of them can fuck with me. None of them have my level of business expertise. Not one of them. And if you took me and JT Hustles and dropped us in the city with $10,000, I would have more money in 30 days than he would. You know why? Because I know how to market. I know how to start businesses. So once again, I will continue to talk about these guys because I believe they're doing you guys a disservice because they're filling up your head. Like right now, I'm having this conversation with someone who would push your man, Mitch. It's like a wreck is a payday. Right now, I have three cars that are wrecked and I'm dealing with claims and it ain't no damn payday. Once again, we need to move from it's possible to I am doing it. I am currently in the car rental business. And I can tell you for a fact, a lot of the stuff you see on YouTube and Instagram is fundamentally false. You want to know why? They're not, they're not trying to help you. Until I started putting up my videos talking about the exploits and stuff and car, Air, car B&B, he talked about it. No one else was talking about it. It was like, oh, Toro's so good. You can make all this money on Toro. You can, do, 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 you can make all this money on Toro. And now, like, I will say I've had 12 Toro trips and I've not had the issues that I've had on hire car. So we will see, because essentially if something happens with Toro, I will be ready. I, I will be ready. I will be ready. So guys, stop waiting. You're not going to take this little tactic. You're not going to spend $500 for a course and immediately make enough money to support yourself and quit your job. That is a fantasy. That is garbage. They're lying to you. What, this is what the journey is going to look like for you. And I'm going to be 100% honest. You're going to keep your job. You ain't quitting your job. And you're going to work twice as hard as you're currently working. That's what's in store for you in your future to become a corporate citizen. That's what's in store. And this is going to go on for two to three years. And then at some point, it's just going to drop. You're going to be working like a madman. You're going to be working weekends. You're going to be working late. Maybe your wife or your girlfriend's going to be feeling a little lonely because you're going to be tired and you ain't going to want to fuck. And then one day you're going to wake up 
and it's all going to come together. You're going to look in your bank account. You're going to see tens of thousands of dollars in your bank account. You're going to see your credit cards all paid off. You're going to roll over and you're going to fuck the shit out of your wife because you're the man. You that man, you the man. And your wife is going to look at you with brand new eyes. She's like, I picked a winner. I picked a winner. Yeah, these last few years have been kind of rough, but she stayed by your side. You know, she rubbed your back. She listened to you. And then one, you know, one Sunday morning, you're going to just, <laughs> you're going to knock the back out that pussy. And then you're going to sit back in your house. You're going to have a nice dinner. And you're going to do a little business stuff because once you're giving business only, you're always going to be checking on your business. And you're just going to sit back and smile. And you'll be like, I, I did this. I did this. I did this. And that, that's the day that the respect is going to start rolling in for you. You're going to be so happy. You're going to be so proud. And that's why I want you to become a corporate citizen. So go ahead, get in the corporate citizen program today. You're currently three weeks behind. Sunday, we're going to start the most critical aspect of the corporate papers, data sets and data points. I am running my car business, not by my gut, not by my feeling, not by these YouTube, fake ass YouTubers. I'm running my business on hard data. And it's starting to, you know, like I said, July, I turned the corner. I got all my cars back. And this month I'm at $12,000 already. This may be my first $24,000 a month. It just depends on how the last 14 days go. So, yeah, I'm going to teach you how to collect data and to do proper marketplace research, which you will not see JT, Ray's, uh, the Black Hustlers Club. You won't see them. They don't know how to do that. They don't know how to collect data sets. They don't know how to analyze. They don't know how to do that. All they know how to do is put up buzzword, uh, buzzword stuff, clickbait topics to get you to watch their videos, and they will not teach you how to build. I've been doing this 12 years. Check my resume. You can Google me. You can see what I've done. You can see what I'm doing. You can Google me. Um, I'm going to Google. Hold on a second. Let me wait till my computer comes on because it was supposed to come on. Ah, there it is. Let's see. I'm about to do this. JT hustles. All right. JT Hustles. Why didn't I change my name from JT Hustles? Uh, first thing that pops up is his YouTube videos. He apparently has 16 books on Amazon. He's got a Twitter. Let's see, what's, what's he doing? Instagram. Let's see. You see his YouTube channel and he, he's written 14 books. He has a podcast. You don't see nothing about any of his, you see his 12 books, that would be considered a business. But, yeah, I don't see his real name. So, 
there ain't really much you can Google about JT Hustles. I'm going to tell you, go to the Georgia Secretary of State. My real name is Glendon Cameron. That's my government name. Go to the Secretary of State and look up Disruptive Asset Holdings. Look up Cameron Media, Cameron Strode Media. Those are my two holding companies. Look up Savage Consulting Services. That's one operating company. Look up Cameron Media Arts. That's another operating company. Look up Mac Daddy Trades. That's an operating company. Mac Daddy Autos. That's another operating company. Mac Daddy Assets. That's an operating. See, I actually will tell you my real name. I will tell you where you can go look and check out my real companies. I have real companies and I'm going to put up my pay stub in the community section. Because I, I, I don't have the reason to lie to you guys and I don't have to hide. I don't have to hide my real name. I, I'm just seriously, if anyone knows what JT Hustle's real name is, please, please, please put it down. Because it's real important for us as creators and influencers to be 100% honest with you guys. And I just feel there's a lack of transparency with me compared with, with the other guys compared to me. How many of these guys will put up a pay stub from their own company? That should tell you something right there, that they don't have a company that they're making enough money to earn, pay themselves a salary. That should tell you something right there. How can someone who cannot create enough income and flow to pay a salary, and also, if they're making a lot of money and they're not doing what I'm doing, they're hustling backwards. They're gonna pay more in taxes than they have to. But th this is who y'all listen to. But that's all I got. Once again, get into the corporate papers. Get into building your corporate empire. Because like I said, this Sunday, we're going to get into data points and data sets. And I'm going to teach you how to find this data. And I'm going to teach you how to create a chart. And I'm going to teach you how to interpret this data. And I'm going to teach you how to make decisions based upon this data. There's a reason that I have 10 BMWs, not 10 Camrys. There's a reason. And this has come from data sets and data points. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.